Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And welcome aboard the new R1300 GS on this absolutely beautiful winter's day. It's a chilly one today. It's, uh, the clock's wrong on the bike, but it's about 9.30 in the morning and it's two degrees centigrade. Bit of danger of ice, but beautiful blue skies as you can see. And you find me at the moment, just having left home in the environs of High Wycombe. I'm heading up on the motorway and heading out on my first tour on the R1300 GS, just to see what it's like on a long ride in the real world. I've got all the panniers loaded up, quite a bit of weight on the bike. I've got the sat nav running. Let's just see what this bike is like if you're going to do a tour on it. Stick around, stay tuned. I'll tell you how I find it. All right, folks, as I uh, mentioned, it's, uh, it's a lot of motorway to start with, so I won't bother to uh, record that for you because that's just tedious. I'll uh, catch up with you when I'm a bit further down the road and tell you what we're up to over the next few days. OK, so clearly I'm not yet on the motorway, so I forgot to mention there's a couple of differences on the bike since uh, potentially you last saw me riding this. First off, I've now got the low seat fitted. I just found that the uh, standard seat on the new bike was just a bit too high for me. I'm five foot eight with a fairly long 32 inch leg, but I was right on my tippy toe. And uh, despite what people tell you, I don't find this bike feeling that much lighter than the old GS. And on tiptoe, I didn't feel particularly secure. So I've got the low seat, which is still heated, I'm glad to say especially today it's two degrees uh, so it's the first proper test of the low seat now also with the low seat I can flat foot the bike pretty much so I feel a lot more uh, secure so I'm glad I've got that but what I will say is it means my legs are a little bit more tucked up because I'm another inch or so closer to the deck and the other thing is it's a lot harder this seat it's nowhere near well it's not that it's nowhere near as comfortable it's quite comfortable but it is noticeably harder with the less padding than the standard seat so if you're kind of in the middle and you can get away with a standard seat, I'd say stick with it because it is more comfortable. That said, I've only been on the bike for 10 minutes with this hard seat. We'll see at the end of this trip how it's fared, but that's one thing. And then the other thing is I've now got a full set of panniers and top box. I've also now got the top box. They're all loaded up and uh, the bike is feeling relatively heavy actually at the back end. Uh, it goes over a long way on the stand this compared to the old GS and hauling it off the stand is quite an effort particularly with my dodgy shoulders. This is the first long ride I will have done since I had my shoulder operation. So that's gonna be interesting in itself. So I'm using it as a bit of a test for that as well. So anyway, so there's a bit of an update on changes on the bike since you last saw it. Got the top box and the panniers, and I've now got the low seat. So I'll uh, report back on how I've got on with those as well later on the trip. Right, I'll settle in, crack on, and speak to you a bit later. Alright, so quick update for you. I'm on the M4T now, the M40, heading towards Birmingham. I've got the cruise control set up at 73 miles an hour and the bike is uh, feeling beautiful. It's, uh, I've got plenty of protection on here. This screen actually works really well. I've got no buffeting on my head with the screen in its uppermost position. And uh, I've noticed the blind spot monitoring thing doing its thing, which is great on the motorway. And uh, also the radar cruise control works an absolute treat. As I say, I've got it set to a max of 73, so I know that I'm likely doing 70 miles an hour. Um, and then, you know, as I gain, well, 74 rather, I've got it set as a max. And then uh, I'm just sitting behind this car ahead. As he slows down, I slow down. I really do like that dynamic cruise control. It's one of those things, a bit like non-dynamic cruise control, that you never really knew that you needed until you've had it. And then you think, how did I get on without this? So yeah, that's a really nice feature. And I do love this blind spot monitoring as a, as a safety feature as well. So uh, I'm not a big fan of electronics, despite what you might think. But those two things on this bike, I actually, it's a thumbs up for me on those. They're really good, particularly in the sort of touring scenario. All right, catch up with you later. All right, just another little update as I'm on the motorway and using this cruise control. Something that it's not good at, that I just learnt was, if you're in the uh, in lane one, the slow lane, for want of a better lane, uh, for want of a better term, sorry, and you decide that you want to overtake a car in the middle that's going slowly and get onto the outside lane, of course, as you cross the lanes, you slow down as the radar picks up the car in the middle lane, and then as you come out into the outside lane, it speeds up again. So uh, I was just now bowling along at sort of 70 miles an hour on, the, on lane one, I indicated to get into the outside lane three and as I pulled across the middle carriageway the bike slowed down quite significantly because there was a slower car up ahead and then of course when I got into lane three it sped up again so it did exactly what it should do but it kind of surprised me if you're using normal cruise control of course you'd just zap across the lanes and on you'd go so just something to be aware of a little use case where maybe the radar cruise control isn't as good as standard but normally speaking 
I'm very impressed with this radar cruise control, particularly because it gives me a chance to just relax my uh, dodgy post-operative arm. So thumbs up so far. Right, I'm on the M42 now, and interestingly, I've just had the fuel reserve uh, warning come on with 42 miles to go. So uh, I've got 42 miles left in the tank, and it's telling me I need to ride to the next uh, service station. Luckily, I'll be doing just that. It's in 22 miles, so theoretically, I've got twice as much fuel left as I need. But just out of interest, that's when the uh, fuel light comes on. Right, well the sat-nav is leaving me in no doubt that I need to come off here. Look, it's saying out in 1.3 miles. I've uh, got to Norton Cane Services, so I'm definitely coming off here, which is uh, where I was going to go anyway and get some fuel. So uh, let's do that. I'm also going to meet up with a buddy here, but let me get some fuel, have a warm-up first, and then uh, once I've met up with John, my mate, I'll explain to you uh, what I'm doing for the, rest of the, for the rest of this trip. Oh, look, it's now saying I'm completely out of fuel. There's 16 miles range to go. But I've got a point. I'm confident I'm going to make it for fuel. But uh, yeah, interesting. Right, I'll speak to you uh, a bit further along on the road when I've fueled up and I'm uh, with my mate John. So wind on an hour or so. I'm now fully fueled. I've had a coffee. I've warmed up a bit. I've met my mate John, who you might be able to see in the mirror. He's on his uh, GSA behind me. And we're now heading into Wales, which is over yonder. We're on the M54 at the moment, just uh, sort of Telford way. Uh, and the idea is, I just realised I hadn't told you what I'm up to. Basically, we're going into Wales. We're going to meet our friend uh, Ian at a pub, have a bit of a lunch, and then we're off to join uh, Mrs. Fire, who's got an Airbnb for the week, uh, and we're just going to base ourselves out of there, which is over near Barmouth on the coast, a lovely bit of Wales, sort of mid to north Wales, and we're going to do some ride outs from there over the next couple of days. So uh, that's kind of the first tour experience that I will have had on this bike. So that's what I'm taking you along on. Hopefully, it's going to stay uh, dry. I'm not sure how much sunshine we're going to see. It's five degrees centigrade at the moment it's not really forecast to be much warmer so we'll see how we get on if we get too cold we won't be doing that much riding but if it's uh, okay then we will anyway stick around and stay tuned we'll see how we get on i'll speak to you when we're in the more picturesque bit of wales and off the nasty motorways and i'm glad to report we're in wales <laughs> didn't actually see a sign saying welcome to wales but we definitely are because it started saying araf on the roads our fun has been temporarily halted as we're now following a house, believe it or not. I'll tell you what, even though the uh, roads are scuddy, it's cold, it's you know wet and damp, and let's face it, it's January and blighty, it, this bike is just incredible. Riding these big sweepers in Wales, I mean, let's face it, Wales always delivers, isn't it? You cannot, there's just not a bad biking road in Wales, it's a brilliant place to ride. But even this time of year on a bike like this, just an absolute pleasure. It's confidence it's inspiring, it feels light and agile. Well, I don't want to overblow it, but this bike really does ride well. And for touring, well, it was a piece of cake coming up on the motorway. Comfortable, fast, cruise control and everything to help you out. And then when you get to the twisties, it's an absolute joy. I've said it before, but the GS is just such a good all-rounder. And this new version has just taken it up a significant notch. Wow. <laughs> Hawk just went overhead as we go through the Mac Loop. That is the first time I've e ever ridden through here and actually seen a low flying jet. Excellent. Caught me by surprise a bit actually. I wonder what the heck it was coming up behind me. They're not usually on their own though, are they? I thought the weather today was going to be a bit iffy for low flying fast jets, but obviously not. Well, who knew that even in January, Wales can deliver such thrilling rides. What a fantastic place. Just look at these views. Absolutely stunning. And all here in the UK. You don't have to go anywhere, do you? Although it is raining a bit now, which is a bit unpleasant. So we're just coming up alongside the estuary in Barmouth now. Absolutely beautiful spot. Look at this, absolutely stunning. Been lucky enough to ride this loads of times actually. I've done it now in the autumn. In fact, I did it in the autumn with Ian a couple of years ago. It's absolutely stunning with all the leaves changing. I've done it in the summertime with both these guys with our missus on the back. And now winter too. And I have to say, it looks beautiful whatever season you do it in. What a stunning view. If maybe you're new to riding, 
you've been thinking about maybe coming to Wales but aren't too sure I cannot encourage you enough to come here doesn't really matter where you are in the UK it's not too far away and as soon as you get here it doesn't matter what route you do all the roads are good you're gonna love it get yourself to Wales and don't worry about these 20 mile an hour limits I mean they are a bit of a pain but they're just in the villages and towns anyway once you're out on the open road it's all good but do be aware of them right we're nearly at our Airbnb in Barmouth catch up with you there So let me just stick a little insert in here to show you the Airbnb that we're staying in on this tour. It's an absolutely cracking place. I'm actually recording this on, the date is the 11th of January, so it's low season, so you'll understand uh, why I'm telling you that in a second. Check this out, this is the kitchen and dining area. Look at that, isn't that lovely? Absolutely cracking. And uh, there's actually five of us staying at the moment. There are three bedrooms, but I'll just show you up my bedroom because of the privacy of the others, of course. This little living room thing here, which is actually not that real. Nice uh, conservatory out there with a cracking view of which more in a minute. I'm just doing some work there while the others are out at the moment. So uh, let me just quickly show you upstairs. So a couple of bedrooms down there and then this way there's a downstairs loo which is rather splendid. Look at this. Amazing big bath, big shower, all pretty cool. And up here, this is where me and Mrs. Flora are staying. A lovely bedroom sort of in the attic but the sort of piece de resistance is this uh, incredible view out here. Look at that. Not too shabby, is it? Now, how much do you reckon this Airbnb with three bedrooms cost us uh, per night? You'll never guess. It was £125, so between five of us, 25 quid a night. What a bargain, eh? And before you ask, I can't remember the name of it, the downside of it is the access is a nightmare. It's not really somewhere you want to bring motorcycles, so don't get all excited and think, oh, we'll go and do a tour there, because uh, it's actually quite difficult. Anyway, lovely place nonetheless. Well, welcome back aboard the bike, folks, on uh, day two of my little tour in Wales on the new R1300GS. You find us in mid-Wales, on the coast, I don't know, about 15 miles north of Barmouth. I think technically we're in the Snowdonia National Park. And as you can see, even though I'm recording this in the middle of January, the weather is absolutely cracking. It just shows you before, oh, in fact, ahead, that that's Harlock Castle. So we're in Harlock. Yeah, it just shows you that uh, if you want to, you can come out in January and have a nice trip. Well, I'm lucky in that... Uh, I'm pretty flexible about when I can go obviously because uh, I'm recording YouTube videos so I can do that anywhere and at any time as it were. My mate Ian ahead, he's basically retired anyway so he can go out on his bike anytime he likes. And John behind, happened to have a bit of time available off work so this is a very hastily put together trip. We only decided we were going to do it last week based on the fact that the weather forecast was good. I'm glad to say the weather forecast was actually right. So great opportunity to try the new bike. Which has been an absolute joy to ride. You know, I'm lucky enough to have ridden in Wales on many occasions. But where we're heading today hopefully is uh, a few roads that I've not done before. So I'll speak to you when we get to some new territory. So we've just come through a little uh, twisty wooded section that I've not uh, ridden before. And although it's uh, straightened out a bit now, one thing I would say I've noticed about the bike that I hadn't noticed before, in second gear doing the twisties through here, quite a lot of engine braking. I'm in dynamic mode. And uh, yeah, quite interesting when you roll off the amount that the bike slows down. And for these sort of roads, actually, I find that is quite helpful. Our views up here just splendid. I love how mountains change through the year. Just over there on the left, I don't know if the Osmo shows it, but on that mountain there's actually a little bit of snow on the peak. And we don't have particularly high mountains in the UK. Of course, uh, Snowdon is the tallest in Wales, but compared to the Alps and things like that, they're not up to much, but uh, they still look pretty majestic. It's actually seven degrees today, which is, feels quite warm after yesterday. 
managed to lose the heated gloves and the heated jacket don't feel quite so trussed up makes a much more enjoyable riding it has to be said one of the things I know I've mentioned it a lot but I am loving about this new GS is this radar cruise control works down to slow speeds look I'm doing an indicated 24 here and uh, because there are such you know it's slow through towns and villages here in Wales a lot of them have 20 mile an hour speed limits I've just set the uh, cruise control up to follow Ian's speed and it just tracks along look a treat brilliant that coming to a 30 now so as he speeds up it'll speed up look and look at this 200 yards later nationals crazy well this is a beautiful valley that I don't remember riding before just down by this river or lake absolutely stunning well England all I can say is we're so lucky to have Wales on our doorstep particularly if you're a motorcyclist so I've had a cracking uh, couple of days riding the new GS on this little uh, sort of test video really to see what it's like to tour on the bike and what are the things I've learnt about it as a touring machine well I suppose a couple of things number one it is a great machine for touring they always have been haven't they GS's and this one is no different it's no less comfortable than GS's that came before so don't worry about that it's great on motorways good uh, wind protection and so on and then when you get to your destination it's great on the twisties too it's a lot of fun so brilliant as an all-rounder the old GS's were the same and this one's no different what surprises have I had if any well I suppose the main surprise from a touring point of view is that I'm not a big fan of the panniers and top box on it number one they're not actually that big the panniers aren't too bad but the top box is quite small it's uh, I don't know what the literage is but it's actually smaller than the old Vario top box on my old GS but the thing that uh, I really don't like about them is the fact that they're that central locking in some ways it's good but in order to get into them the bike has to be switched on so you're forever as you go in and out of your panniers and top box when you're on tour which of course you do a lot when you stop and what have you you have to keep turning the bike on and off to get into them I'm not sure how good that's going to be for your battery long term and then actually taking them on and off is a bit fiddly so although they're very well made I'd argue probably better made than the old Vario cases and they look okay, although they don't look quite as uh, purposeful as the old sort of aluminium boxes. I think from a functional point of view, they miss the mark slightly. I have central locked uh, top box and panniers on my Goldwing, and they just work so much better. You don't have to turn the ignition on for it, and they just detect if you're near it with the key. So whenever you're near the bike with the key, they're unlocked. So you can get in and out them as much as you want. So yeah, so the uh, cases that come with the new GS, not a fan of those I'm afraid. I'll do a proper review of them at some point and make a video just on those so I can explain a bit more about that. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else that uh, to report in a negative way. It's still a great bike for touring on. Right, looks like we might be stopping for a brew. So uh, I'll say thank you for watching once again. That's it for this time. Until next time, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.